Hello everyone and welcome back to Destiny. Today I want to make a quick video going over Season 6, outlining some of the changes that you can expect. Now we still don't have anywhere near as much information as we'd like, and sadly I think we're going to have to wait till next week to learn more. That's when I fully expect to hear more about Season of the Drifter in regards to quests, Pinnacle Pursuits, and of course the Joker's Wild release, which is the second of three content injections that are part of the annual pass. But for now we'll touch on the sandbox update Bungie is prepping for the start of the season, along with some very interesting changes coming to our beloved game mode known as Gambit. We'll go over all the changes, and then I'll give you some of my initial reactions and thoughts. So let's just get right into it. Alright, now I know I don't do a lot of Destiny news videos anymore, but when my favorite game mode gets tinkered with, and to the degree it's being tinkered, it's certainly a cause for discussion. So let's not bury the lead, let's jump right into the Gambit changes, and keep in mind these changes are independent of the quote unquote new Gambit experience that we'll be getting as part of the Joker's Wild release, rather these are changes to the core Gambit mode. Now, they say that this is based on feedback from the community, and I have to say, I think there's some really good changes here. I'll toss the list on screen as we go over it together. Oh, and by the way, the season does change over on March 5th, and although it hasn't yet been announced, I fully expect Joker's Wild to launch a week later on the 12th. We'll be seeing these changes on the 5th, so let's get right into it. So, they've changed the third round of Gambit to be a primeval rush sudden death. This will speed up Gambit matches overall and add a change of pace to the final round. This is pretty much exactly how Crimson Days worked. If you managed to get to round 5, where the teams were 2-2, two and two, the last one was just a rush to get to the capture point, and it was a much shorter round just to wrap things up. Now, I don't necessarily think that Gambit matches were too long, but it will make you generally earn more infamy and more rewards in the same amount of time, just because you'll be getting more Gambit matches in in the same amount of time, so I think overall it's probably a good idea. Next up, overhaul how we choose the invader spawn location and increase the number of invader spawn points on each map. This should greatly reduce the chances of spawning very near or in direct line of sight of an enemy guardian. I think this is a fantastic change. It can definitely be annoying to be spawn sniped as an invader, so I'm happy for the change. Next up, they are implementing idle protection, which means that players that remain dormant for too long will not receive end of match rewards or infamy points. This is genius. If this works well, it needs to be implemented into the Crucible and into Vanguard Strikes as well. It sounds like the perfect solution for this five-year-old problem. I'm hoping this finally does in AFKers because they can be absolutely infuriating. I mean, just listen to my cat. <laughs> you you hate him too, right? They're They're terrible. Anyways, moving on. The Triumph Light vs. Light can now be progressed by killing any Guardian using a super, not just invaders. This means that attaining a Dredgen title is a little less daunting. Meh. I never found it to be that much of an issue, but I guess it can be annoying if you have to wait for an invader to not only come and invade, but also use their super during the invasion. Doesn't really happen as often as you think, and I can't really talk about this because I had seven of them before I even realized I needed it for dredging, just kind of accidentally got them. So this is fine, so not that big of a deal. But moving on to the big one, and that is their adjustments to the blockers. First up, we have a change on the small blocker. Instead of the current Phalanx, we are getting a Taken Goblin, and that's going to have less health than the Phalanx did as well. The medium blocker, instead of the Knight, we are getting a Taken Captain that has more health than the Knight used to. And then for the large blocker, we're getting a Taken Knight with more health than the previous Ogre. So awesome changes here. The Phalanxes were very annoying to deal with. They definitely felt like they should have been maybe the medium blocker instead of the knight, but I'm glad that they're gone. The Taken Knight, I didn't have an issue with, and hopefully the captain doesn't have the elemental shield they normally do, because that would be kind of annoying. But regardless, the knight with more health than the ogre is something that I really like. At least you're not going to be I-beamed back to orbit like you currently are with the Ogres. So all of this is fine. There was a funny post that I saw on Reddit that got me thinking, and I really hope that they have thought of this ahead of time. 
I feel like goblins are a bad idea for blockers given their tendency to shield each other and become unkillable. It'll be pretty frustrating to not be able to bank because of goblins bugging out. And this was answered very quickly by good old damage. This should not be possible. We'll double triple check with the team. So hopefully this is something that they've tested out or thought about. I personally refer to this as the Forbidden Kiss, so I really hope they didn't forget about this. Otherwise, people will absolutely spam small blockers in the hopes that one of the pairs decide to have a makeout session. We will know hopefully more soon enough. Next, let's talk about the Sandbox. We're getting another pass for the beginning of the season, and they're making some pretty interesting changes. First up, we have some adjustments to linear fusion rifles. The aim assist values will receive an adjustment to reduce effectiveness at very long ranges. They've also mentioned that they discovered an issue with the Crean Breaker, where it was not honoring aim assist values that apply to other linear fusion rifles of the same archetype. This resulted in their having double the intended aim assist. So now we know why you don't even have to aim the Queen Breaker to seemingly get a headshot. I've already switched over to the Crooked Fang as I suggest you do as well. It's a very great alternative to the Queen Breaker. Next up, the Linear Fusion Rifles will receive a 10% damage increase in PvE to compensate for the above changes. That's always a welcome thing. Next up, let's talk about shotguns. Yes, we have a couple nerfs here but I feel that they are long overdue as I felt that the weapon archetype was strongly unbalanced within itself. And you'll see what I mean here in just a moment. So right off the bat, shotguns will receive a damage multiplier in PVE activities, effectively doubling their damage. This is insane. This is how they are balancing the PVE version of these weapons against PVP. Although I have to say, I really hope that they are delivering the same amount of love to sniper rifles and fusions. It will be the first thing I'll be looking for when the patch notes get released. Next up, full auto rate of fire bonus for shotguns is now 10% increase down from 100%. So this is potentially controversial, but as you'll see here in a moment, they are actually getting buffed across the board and we are left with a net positive in DPS. The nerf is simply to the full auto perk itself, but instead of just nerfing the perk, they're buffing all shotguns across the board so that it doesn't feel like a nerf. Let's go over the rest of the notes and we'll talk about it at the end. Full auto no longer increases the shotgun pellet spread. Default rate of fire values have been shifted. Aggressives are now 55 RPM up from 45. Precisions are 70 RPM up from 55. That's pretty massive. Lightweights are 80 RPM. This isn't a nerf. It's actually always been 80 RPM and it's been erroneously stated as 90. I guess no one in the entire community has tested that out. Next up, Rapid Fire 140 RPM, which is down from 200. They were previously natively 100, but due to the intrinsic full auto, it actually had 200. As you know, full auto increases your rate of fire regardless of whether or not you are actually using it in full auto. Next up, they've reduced the base damage for shotguns across the board to align with their new rates of fire and per sub archetype basis. Ammo reserves for shotguns were reevaluated due to the increased efficiency of having more damage per shot, reduced effective range in Crucible, probably by reducing their base PvP damage so that the damage falloff is noticed much quicker. So in summary, full auto is getting nerfed. All the other shotguns are having their rate of fire increased while the base damage across the board is being increased to compensate. They just want you to be able to fire faster with some of these other shotguns, which I definitely appreciate, but then the PVE damage multiplier will actually make the change as a net increase in DPS, doubling shotgun damage. This will make full auto not feel like it's an essential perk on a shotgun. Rapid fire frames will still have the fastest rate of fire shotguns, and let's just hope we get trench barrel on some aggressive frames. I just wanna go around deleting majors if that's okay with everyone. Anyways, moving on, we have finally some changes to the One-Eyed Mask. The duration of the Mark of Vengeance perk has been reduced from 15 seconds to 8. The way players refill health after a successful kill has changed. Before it restored all of your health and the overshield refilled over time, now the health refills over time alongside the overshield. This should give a leg up when encountering situations where multiple people are fighting one person with the one-eyed mask equipped. And then aside from that, we have Vengeance will no longer trigger for players in Super. This was making Supers far too potent. 
and I highly agree. This was definitely one of those situations where I regretted starting my Luna grind on my Warlock. That way I had to sort of stay with my Warlock through all of those steps, and I wasn't able to engage Easy Mode, which was the one I'd mask. Thankfully, that's not going to be around for too much longer, and it should impose a problem next season, or at least hopefully not as bad of a problem. So, all in all, I think the changes are good. Of course, we'll have to wait until the changes go live and until we get our hands on these shotguns to give final judgment. So, these are just some of the changes that are coming next season. Of course, they're again landing March 5th. This will also bring upon Season 6, Season of the Drifter. All ranks are being reset including Glory, Valor, and Infamy. And to help you with one last minute Infamy grind, they are activating Triple Infamy for the entire week, so be sure to utilize that if you still need it. Now, before we go, a quick PSA, only because I still get a lot of questions about this, which is fine, but a lot of people are still asking if Black Armory stuff is going to be removed from the game in the new season. The quick answer is no, although I can see why there might be some confusion. Basically, the only activities that ever get removed from the game are the ones that are referred to as live events. Events like Festival of the Lost, The Dawning, Crimson Days, these are typically one to three week events that are subsequently removed after the event is over. They typically are around holidays. We had The Dawning and Crimson Days last season. This season, we're getting an event that has not been announced yet, but we do know that the event coming in Season of the Redacted, which is Season 8, is in fact going to be another Solstice of Heroes, so we have that to look forward to as well. Anyways, let me know in the comments below what you think of these changes. What else do you want to see in the new season? Let's discuss. Also, we've been playing quite a bit of Anthem. If you want to see some of our footage, we did post a video a couple days ago. You can go watch Caitlin and I play through the first couple missions of that game and also go through our character creations. It was a lot of fun, so definitely check that out if you're curious about Anthem. If you liked the video, a positive rating is much appreciated, and be sure to subscribe for much more gaming content right here on Nerd on TV. Thanks for watching, happy gaming, and I will see you all next time.